Hi everyone, and welcome to Contemporary Hand Embroidery for Beginners. My name is Esther Patch, I am the Registrar at the Fresno Art Museum, and a humble hand embroidery enthusiast. Inspired by our new exhibition, Bonnie Peterson, Another Glorious Sierra Day, I thought it would be fun to show you some simple embroidery stitches, some of which Bonnie used in some of her pieces shown currently in our galleries. I have downloaded this free pattern from dmc.com. I have included the download for your convenience in the material list provided. I thought this was a simple but pretty pattern to learn with. So these are the materials you will be needing to complete this project. We have an embroidery hoop. This one is eight inches, but you can print the pattern at whatever size to suit what hoop size you would like to use. You will need a piece of cotton fabric. You can use any color you would like. I chose this unbleached cotton. I like that it's a little see-through so that it's easy to trace the pattern. Next, you'll need a pencil or a water-soluble pen like I have here. An embroidery needle size eight or nine. The eye needs to be large enough to fit several strands of thread at one time. Scissors for cutting your thread. And lastly, embroidery floss. I chose colors that closely match the ones on the pattern, but feel free to get creative and choose whatever colors you like. So first we want to get our pattern onto the fabric. I'm just unscrewing the top of the hoop to open it up. I'm going to place the fabric onto the inner ring and then just place the outer one back on top. You want to tighten it back up and then pull the fabric tight. You want to have nice tension on the fabric to ensure nice clean stitches. Now that I have my fabric in place, I'm going to take the pattern and place it onto the flat surface. I'm then going to flip my hoop upside down so that it lays flat against the pattern. You can now see it through the fabric, which will allow you to trace it easily. If you're unable to see it, you can also place it up against a window and that can kind of serve as like a light box. When tracing, it doesn't have to be perfect as this is just going to be your guideline. So if you're using a pencil, do be sure to be a little light handed as it won't wash out of the fabric. If it doesn't get covered with stitches, it will be visible. This is one of the reasons why I enjoy the water soluble pen as that way when it's all finished, the lines will just disappear when I rinse it. Now that I'm finished tracing, I'm going to open my hoop back up and just flip over the fabric so that the pattern side is now on the front of the hoop, and again ensuring that it is nice and taut within it.
pages included in the document linked for download, and it shows the colors used by DMC to complete the design. I did my best to match them to these, but as I mentioned before, feel free to use whatever colors you would like. This next page shows diagrams of the different types of stitches we'll be learning and using today. Now that our design is traced onto our fabric, we're ready to begin stitching. I'm going to start with the back stitch. This is one of the easiest stitches to do, and I'm going to use this green color that was the closest match I could find to the original pattern. So first you're going to grab your embroidery floss and unwound about two feet of thread. You can use as little or as much as you'd like. I just find this to be the easiest length to work with. Um, I usually just eyeball it, so whatever feels right will do. I'm just going to snip that. And embroidery floss actually comes as six strands that are wound together. So we have to separate these to the amount of threads that we want to use. Typically I use two to three strands depending on the type of stitch. This particular stitch I want to use two, so I'm going to go ahead and pull those separate. I like to just pull them as I hold the rest of them there. It does get a little twisted and tangled, so just be patient with it. You'll get it. Um, just be sure to not let it get too twisted up as then it can cause knots in your thread. But if it does, just snip off another length and start again. So now that I have my two strands, I'm going to go ahead and knot them for the beginning. I'm just going to do a simple knot. I like to go ahead and do it twice just so I know it's not going to pull through. decent knot there and then I'm just going to go ahead and put my thread through the eye of the needle. I have my needle here. So this can be a little tricky. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. You're just going to put the needle underneath so that it becomes taut between your fingers there. You're going to pinch them together quite hard, pull the needle out, and then you're just going to wiggle that eye over the top of that and it should place them into the eye of the needle that then you can just pull the rum the rest of the way through. So for the back stitch, I'm going to start with my needle just a little less than a quarter of an inch up from the beginning of my stem, and then you're just going to pull that through to the other side. Then you're going to place the needle at the bottom of the stem and pull that through to the back side. So to do the next stitch, you're going to once again start at about the same distance of the other stitch just above. And then place the needle as close as you can to the beginning of that first stitch and then pull it through. You're just going to keep doing this all the way up to the top of the stem, just trying to maintain the same distance um, starting point so that your stitches are more or less the same size all the way through. Consistency in stitches helps with the overall appearance in the end. as you're stitching and so you just have to flip it over, check out what's going on the back side. Um, usually it just needs a little bit of untwisting of the thread and then it'll go back to normal. Oh. 
So next we're going to do the Lazy Daisy stitch. I'm going to be using the same color that I used before for the back stitch. So all I'm going to do is just continue on from where I left off finishing that previous stem. You're going to start from the back side and I'm just going to place my needle to about the center of where those two first leaves come together. Place your needle as close as you can to that hole you just came out of, moving the thread out of the way so you can make sure that you don't pull it all the way through at first, because then you're going to make another stitch coming back from the back at the top of that leaf. You're going to pull that through the loop you've just made. And then make another small stitch by going onto the other side of that thread, but very close to where you just pulled it through. And this is just to secure that loop there on the fabric so that you have this really nice leaf shape. Now that I've come down and finishing up my last leaf here, I'm going to want to finish this off on the back so that I can start with a new color for my next set of stems. So you can make a loop by crossing the thread over itself and under and then just tighten it as close as you can to the fabric. And then I have a knot that's very close there so it won't pull through. Then you want to go ahead with your scissors and just snip the last bit off the end there so you don't have too many loose threads hanging around. You can see some of mine got a little caught here but that's fine. The nice thing about embroidery is no one's looking at the back anyways. So now we're going to go into the stem stitch. This one's quite an easy one that has a nice spiral effect to it. I'm going to use this slightly lightly colored green compared to the first one to add some variation. I'm going to start the stitch at the very base of this line. And then about the same distance as we did for the back stitch, just a little bit less than a quarter of an inch to a quarter of an inch. And then you're just going to come up about halfway, the halfway point of that first stitch. bring that needle through and you want it to be, I'm pulling the thread a little bit to the side because I don't want it to come through the stitch, I just want it to be alongside of it. Then I'm going to move my needle about a half distance of that first stitch was. And then I'm going to bring it back through but at the top of where that last stitch was, so halfway through that stitch as well. And 
and you can see it's not through the stitch it's just in the middle of it but by pulling that thread aside we're able to create this nice sort of spiral effect here you can see I come up to the top of that stitch there I apologize I chose a very light colored green it's sort of hard to see against the blue And this is where you can see the lines are sort of a guideline. If you don't stay exactly on the lines, that's okay. Um, if you did use a pencil, you just wanna to try to stay as true as you can so that it stays hidden. And I used two strands of thread uh, for this stitch as well. stitch this one's really simple um, it's just like a regular just up to the back and then down and it can go in whatever direction you choose you can see I sort of played around with my lines here I didn't um, draw all the lines in from the pattern so I'm just sort of making it up as I go just going through the fabric and then back down where I want that stitch to end slightly more complicated French knot is what it's called and I'm gonna go with this nice deep berry red here I've done a few already just to kind of show you what they're going to look like so you're just gonna bring your needle up from the back and I use three strands for this one to give it a little bit more weight you're just gonna wrap it around your needle so it's once and then twice and then you're gonna bring it back down as close as you can to where you brought the needle through originally pulling it tight with your other hand so that as you pull the needle through you keep that tension there only letting it go right at the end to form that really nice knot this one takes a little bit more practice but once you get it going it's pretty easy so you're just once again going to pull that through then you're going to wrap it around the needle and then straight back down through that original, close to that original hole, and you're gonna keeping it taut. Sometimes a little difficult to pull through, but you'll get it. And then, there you go. So I'm just kind of placing these where I feel like they look nice, um, sort of using my dots as a guideline, but once again, just sort of having fun with where I wanna put the little flowers on this one. You can see sometimes it can be a little tough to pull it through. If you get a little thread caught in there, sometimes that happens. You should be able to just pull it out. sort of an order next we're gonna go back into the stem stitch I've chosen a slightly darker color here to add some variation and it's just once again making that first stitch from the bottom up sometimes it can get a little twisted and then coming up halfway in that stitch 
pulling it through and then going about that same half distance and then the needle coming back through at the top of that previous stitch. And pulling that through. So this I'm going to do at the bottom of all of the other little daisy-like flowers. Going back into the Lazy Daisy stitch, I'm going to go with this yellow color and these are for the petals of these really cute little flowers here at the bottom. So just like we did for the leaves earlier, we're just going to come up through at the top there. I'm going to move it to the side, then back down almost right where we put that original needle placement, pulling that through, and then I'm going to go in the middle of this loop I've now made come down to the base of that first petal, pull it through, and then make the small stitch on the opposite side to secure it. So we're going to go back into the French knot, and this is just to add the middle piece of these little flowers here at the bottom. So coming through the back with this nice orange color and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap my needle around just one and two and then back through where I had just come from and I'm just going to pull that through holding it on the other side until the very end to form that nice knot and we're going to do this at the center of each of these little flowers. wagon wheel stitch. This one's really fun. It makes a nice kind of rose style. You're just going to place your needle in the center of this circle shape that we traced earlier. And then you're going to come to one end of the circle and pull that through. I use three strands for this one to add some thickness to it. And then we're going to just make like a five pointed star shape by moving that needle from the outside back into the center. And I'm just kind of going with whatever looks best and trying to make it as equal distance as I can between, I guess, what would be the spokes of the wagon. Once you've got your five, you're going to go back to about the center as you can. doesn't matter where you want to start. Pull that all the way through. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put our needle under and over, under and over, under, and then back over, just alternating. I like to use the back end of my needle, but you could use the front end. I just find it doesn't stick to as much. So we're going under that first stitch. Then we're going to go over that one and we're going to go back 
under the next one. It's kind of hard, a little tricky, not to make sure you get it under the other ones. So then we're going to go over just this one here, and then we're going to go under that one. going to keep going around and around oh, until it gets filled all the way up until the edges of those original five stitches. fast forward through the rest of them just because it does take a lot of time and this is me just finishing another one you can see I'm getting towards the end of where you can't really see my stitches anymore I'm just gonna pick a place within the rows and I'm just gonna stick it into the back and then finish it up in the back side just with another knot like we did the other stitches I did my back stitch for the row stem with the straight stitches again and then just doing the stem stitch all the way up to the tops of each parts of these um, flowers here and then finishing up at the top with the straight stitch. So we're going to go back into the French knot for the top of these. And I'm just kind of placing them wherever I feel like looks nice. Um, I didn't really mark them from the pattern. Some of it's sort of just intuitive, so you can just do it as you like. So we're just gonna go into the fern stitch. Uh, the fern stitch is very similar to what we've been doing. You're just gonna start here at the top and then bring it down to the center of where the fern is going to split there. Then back up to the top of the other stem piece. And then bring it back down to the base of that first stitch. And then back to the top of the one before on the right hand side. And then back down to the base of that first stitch again. Then kind of like the back stitch, you're just going to come back. So you're going to come back to the base of the three here. Then you'll do the center. And it really doesn't matter if you want to go from left to center to right. So long as your stitches are coming back down to that same point. And you can see I don't always follow the lines. My drawing may not have been as straight as my stitches are going to be, so I'm sort of just doing whatever I think looks best and most consistent in terms of size. For this one, I did use two strands of thread, um, just so it was a little bit more delicate. So we've gone back to the straight stitch, that really simple stitch, um, and this I'm just sort of doing intuitively to create the petals of this flower here. Um, I am somewhat following what I drew from the plan, leaving a little space in the middle uh, because that's where the French knots go for the center of that flower. So now I'm just finishing up the last one 
You can see all of them are very a little bit differently. And then I'm going to go in with the French knot for the center of these. I'm just doing three per entry and I've just got this light pink here. Once again, moving into three strands for the French knot. You can use three, four, two, whatever you feel looks best. Um, it's truly just a design choice. I find that any more than three is hard to thread through the needle's eye, so I would try to stick between two or three. One is too small, um, it won't come up, it won't be as visible. Also, don't be afraid to stitch through stitches you've already placed. You can see that um, I came in a little too far in the middle of this one, so I'm just pushing my French knot thread through the center regardless and then back on top so you can't see it once it's on there. So I went ahead and finished some of the other ones that are similar stitches to what we did before. This is sort of the final product. Now we've just got to trim off our edges. I definitely had more fabric here than I needed at the beginning, but that's okay. I'm going to trim it down to about half an inch on the side and I'm just going to trim that all the way around. Then I'm going to take a piece of thread, you could use any color you'd like, I'm just using the pink, it was the last one I had available. I'm going to make sure it's really long because I want it to be able to go all the way around without having to get another one, so I'm just sort of getting an idea of what size I need that to be. So I'm just going to start making like a small sort of pleat there just by threading it through and just folding the fabric as I go, just to create sort of like an accordion like effect so that it's actually going to tighten the fabric towards the center of the hoop. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this all the way around. And you can see as I tighten it, it will start to form on the inside. going to go ahead and do this all the way around the hoop until I reach back to where I first started. So now that I've made it all the way around, I'm just going to create a simple knot here by just going under one of my previous stitches. I'm gonna go under, and then I'm gonna come around and then through the loop that I just made. I apologize again for the light colored thread. I know it's sort of hard to see. And then I'm just gonna do that twice. So I'm gonna go back through the thread, or the stitch, I'm sorry. Over and then through that loop just made and then tighten it up to a knot. Then I'm just going to trim off that excess thread. So you could just leave it like this, but I am going to add a small backing on the back just to give a more finished look from behind. I like to just use a piece of felt. I'm just going to trace the shape of the hoop onto the felt.
I've knotted the end already. I'm just going to go up from the back there and pull my needle through as close as I can to the edge. Place the felt over. And then come down maybe like a quarter of an inch or so. So I'm gonna go through the felt and then back up through really close again to the top of that hoop. And so it creates like this straight stitch just around and it's looped around both. So it's gonna adhere the felt to the backing of it. And I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around. Making sure to go through the felt and then back through the fabric. Now that I've reached the end, I'm just going to do my last few stitches here at the top. And then I'm just going to go underneath that first stitch and then through this loop I've just made. And you'll see that's just going to form a knot. trim that with a little bit of room because I'm just going to tuck that behind it so it's not so visible. I'm just going to use the end of my scissors there to just kind of push that through. And there you have a nice little backing. It's not perfect but it looks all right. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed making this little creation with me. It does take some time. You can see some of it I had pushed through just so I could show you the different stitches throughout it. Um, but if you follow that diagram, it shows you exactly where to put which type of stitch. But once again, this is your creation. So if you like doing one stitch and you wanna practice it more than another, then feel free to make it your own. Thanks for joining me. And if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Thanks.